Alright, uh, let's look at the three damped motions. So we put the uh, dash bar back in. So the equation is uh, mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx is equal to zero. Alright, so let's look at the uh, characteristic equation as usual. Alright, so it's going to be mr squared plus cr plus k is equal to zero. All right, then we're going to have to use a quadratic formula to find the r. So r is going to be a negative uh, b, actually in this case c, uh, plus or minus square root of uh, c squared minus 4mk all over 2 times m. All right, so that's that. So depending on the um, uh, this guy right here, all right, the value here, we're going to get uh, different kind of roots. All right, so for example, if... Um, uh, if uh, c squared uh, minus uh, 4 uh, m k happens to be greater than 0, then you will get uh, two distinct real roots. Right? So let's say uh, you're going to have uh, r equals, say, r1 and r2. Right? So the the solution is going to look like this. So x of t is going to be a linear combination of uh, e to the r1t and um, e to the r2t. Right? Uh, you notice that uh, this is going to be uh, our value is going to be a negative value, so because so you're going to have an e to the uh, negative number t, so it's a decreasing exponential function. So the uh, ballpark picture of the graph of x of t is going to look like this. So if you start out with a say um, uh, in a positive position and a give a positive velocity, so it's going to go up. But the, because the damper or or dash pot is pretty strong, so motion pretty much dies that dies down uh, right away. So maybe I should. So this is gonna die down like that, All right? Or if it start out uh, with a negative velocity, then it's gonna die almost immediately, like that. All right? So that's the typical graph of um, you know uh, x of t. All right, so this situation is called the uh, overdamped. So damping is so strong that the motion pretty much dies immediately. So this is called the uh, over uh, damped. All right. How about, uh, this is uh, called the critical case, but uh, what happens if you have uh, c squared minus 4mk happens to be exactly equal to 0, all right? Then you get uh, repeated roots. So uh, r, so this is uh, repeated uh, uh, twice. Right, so we know that the solution is going to look like this. Uh, x of t is going to look like. Right, remember that it's going to be a plus uh, b times t e to the r t. Right. Uh, depending on the um, uh, a value and b value, it might be a little bit different. But it uh, looks like, uh, you know, the, there's going to be a, a possibly a t-intercept. There's going to be at least, uh, I mean, uh, you know, at most one t-intercept. 
So what happens is, let's say if you start out uh, up here, positive x, and give a negative velocity, initial velocity, then uh, th it's going to go, the motion is going to go down like that. But uh, because of the damper, it passes through the t-axis. But uh, here, it's going to die down, but uh, never crosses the t-axis again, right? So it can cross uh, at most, uh, you know, the t-axis once because you can see that, that this part can potentially be equal to zero, right? But uh, probably if you give a, a positive velocity, so you, you push it that way, then it'll probably die down, right? Right. So... This is called the critical, critically damped case. All right. So this is probably the ideal case for a damper for a, a, like a door. So it, it doesn't die down very uh, aggressively and it kind of dies down very slowly but uh, not too slowly, all right? And the last case is um, when uh, C squared minus 4MK happens to be negative, right? Then you see that uh, you're going to get the complex root. So R is going to be, let's say, A plus or minus BI, all right? then the solution is going to look like, so since you have a complex root, you're going to get uh, e to the ax. Then you have a cosine term, so I'm going to call it uh, a times cosine of uh, bt. And then you have uh, b times uh, sine of lowercase bt, right? which we can uh, rewritten uh, using the previous uh, technique. Uh, you can pull out the C, uh, that's the um, uh, square root of A squared plus B squared, and AX, and you can write it as a cosine of uh, BT minus some phase angle alpha, all right? So this one, uh, you will have a, a time varying uh, um, uh, amplitude. Uh, you can see that the here, this guy actually changes uh, with respect to time. Actually, I messed up something here. So this is actually a variable is t. So I'm gonna, let's see, hold on a sec. Um, but variable is t. So I have to erase that. And I have to erase that. And uh, that's t there. And that's t there. All right. So we got that. Then, uh, so this is the, um, as I said, uh, this is called uh, uh, time varying uh, amplitude. All right, since the amplitude is actually changing um, uh, over time, it's actually, uh, amplitude is decreasing. So the damping is very, very uh, small, so that the uh, the oscillation is going to keep on happening, but over time it eventually dies down. So the, the a typical motion is going to be something like this. So you have uh, oscillation is happening, but uh, eventually the oscillation dies down because of the damping. But uh, it takes a while, so it's keep on oscillating, and the amplitude gets smaller and smaller over time. All right? This case is called the uh, under damped case. Under damped case because uh, damping is so weak that uh, it allows the motion to uh, the oscillation to happen um, uh, for a while but eventually it dies down, All right? So these are the uh, three cases of uh, free damped motion. Uh, depo depending on the strengths of the damping, of course, you're going to get a different kind of motion, All right? That's it.
I hope that uh, this was clear.